Torsten Slock, the chief economist over at Apollo, who made news today with his view that a reaccelerating economy and a rise in underlying inflation means the Federal Reserve will not cut rates at all this year. What say you? Oh, I missed that. Uh, I didn't hear Torsten had uh, made that change. Uh, I think, you know, it's a scenario. It's possible. But I think more likely inflation will continue to come in, get back to the Federal Reserve's target of all in by late this year. Economy will continue to moderate sufficiently that uh, the Fed will cut interest rates. So I expect, you know, if not at the May meeting, it feels like the June meeting and maybe one quarter point cut each quarter going forward. So a couple of rate cuts this year, I think that's probably more likely than certainly them raising interest rates this year. You've been pointing uh, to seasonal factors in the PCE data this week. I wonder, Mark, your thought on the first drop in consumer sentiment in four months and how we should read into that. We look at it more closely than some political polls around here. Yeah, no, you know what, Joe, not much. Uh, that, I think that's the University of Michigan survey you're referring to. I don't pay a lot of attention yes. to the particular survey yet. It's, I think it's just uh, people answer the questions there through the prism of their own political kind of perspective. You can, you know, if you look at the responses to that survey by Republicans and compare that to Democrats, night and day, and that switches depending on who's in the uh, Oval Office. So I, I really don't pay much attention to that survey. The conference board survey, I like that survey. That's a month, also a monthly survey. They've been doing that since the 70s. And that, that's more consistent with the consumers doing their thing, as Mary Daly was talking about. You know, if you, if it's an index, and the average over time is about 100. I think the last read for last month was a 106. So, you know, it's not great. People aren't feeling fantastic, but they're feeling good enough yeah. to keep, keep on spending. So, I, you know, I, I think uh, by that measure, and I think that's the better measure, we're, we're, we're fine. The economy's uh, doing just, just fine. Doing just fine here in Washington, I guess you could say we're doing just fine because the government isn't going to shut down, at least partially, this weekend, as we maybe thought just a, a few days ago. I know that the economic ramifications of a government shutdown aren't as severe as, say, uh, defaulting on our debt had we not raised the debt ceiling last year. But Fitch actually just released their latest uh, rating of the United States, confirming them a double A plus, uh, affirming them rather. And there's a note in here about how divided government complicates the budget process, talking about how it has led to repeated episodes of political brinkmanship surrounding the debt limit, threats of a government shutdown. How, even if not in the immediate term in terms of economic ramifications, how should we be thinking about the dysfunction here in Washington and what it means for our longer term economic outlook for fiscal sustainability? Yeah, it's a, uh, clearly an issue, a problem. I mean, our fiscal outlook is pretty dark if we don't make changes to fiscal policy, to tax and spending policy. I mean, just take a look at the Congressional Budget Office's recent forecast. The CBO is the nonpartisan group that does the budgeting for for the country. And under current policy, the de nation's debt to GDP ratio will go from 100 percent today. By the way, that's more than double what it was before the financial crisis. So 100% today, I'm making the numbers up, but roughly orders of magnitude, 115% 10 years from now, 180% 30 years from now. I think that's when the forecast ends, but you can do your own forecast. That's not sustainable. So lawmakers do need to get, get it together and come together. And, you know, when they're shutting the government down or threatening to do that, or, you know, we, we're going to have to address the debt limit again on the other side of the election this time next year. If they uh, engage in brinkmanship or, goodness, uh, if they start, if they actually uh, breach the debt limit, then we got a big problem. So, uh, you know, I think that's, that's not the, here and now, that's not the biggest problem we have or issue, but that is definitely a problem that uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to face in, in the not too distant future, because it is a corrosive on the economy. Yeah. Speaking to the strength of the consumer uh, today, Mark Zandi, we caught up with Jared Bernstein, who chairs the Council of Economic Advisors, of course, at the White House, uh, who was reflecting on not only consumer sentiment, but other indicators that he's putting together as a composite. Here's what he said. I don't think anyone should change their view that consumer sentiment, consumer confidence uh, has been moving in a pretty reliable uh, way in a direction suggesting that economic improvements have been reaching people in a way that they weren't a few months ago. And those improvements, of course, reflect easing inflationary pressures, a strong job market, rising real wage growth, very strong consumer spending and GDP. You both uh, had a similar reaction to the consumer sentiment data out today, Mark. You mentioned the confidence numbers. What else are you looking at in the next couple of months to gauge the strength of the consumer and 
therefore get a sense of the direction of interest rates? Well, you know, the key here, Joe, is that wages, wage growth has to continue to be stronger than the rate of inflation. People's so-called real wages have to continue to rise. Now, that's fortunately been the case now for the better part of, of the past year. And I think that's one of the key reasons why sentiment, uh, while soft, is steadily improving. People are feeling better about things. They're not feeling great because they still remember back uh, two, three years ago when inflation was raging stronger than wage growth. Real wages were declining, and that was undermining their purchasing power. But we're, here we are today. We're moving in the right direction. And all the trend lines look pretty good. I mean, the job market's strong, 3.7% unemployment, rock solid. We've been there for two years. That's full employment. And that should support continued solid wage growth. And I, uh, Joe, believe that inflation will continue to moderate. It's headed in the right direction, and I think that will continue. And that means real wages will remain positive, continue to increase. That is the key reason for optimism about the American consumer. There's other reasons, obviously, but that's the key reason. And uh, if, you're, if you're optimistic about the American consumer, then more likely now you're going to be, like I am, more optimistic about the U.S. economy because the, the consumer drives the train, and even the global economy. I mean, we're the strongest. The U.S. is the, the strong, one of the strongest uh, economies on the planet, and we're driving growth throughout the rest of the world. And the rest of the world is struggling, but it, it would likely be in recession if not for the support provided by the American consumer buying lots of what the rest of the world is producing. So, you know, I, that's the key here is uh, in, in keeping yeah. and making sure that real wages can remain positive. Well, and the resilience of the consumer thus far sure has surprised many. It's a question of the longevity, though, of that phenomenon. Where do you expect we will be November of 2024 when voters are heading to the polls? If policy stays perhaps tighter than we all thought just a few months ago by that point, how much will we have deteriorated? Uh, you know, Kaylee, I think we'll be fine. Uh, I think that it should be a, a reasonably good year. Maybe not quite as good as 2023, but I think it'll be a good year. Uh, and I do, as I said earlier, expect the Fed to start cutting interest rates. But even if they don't, you know, I was only counting on one interest rate uh, uh, decline before the uh, election in November. So I don't know that that's a, you know, a really big deal. But all, everything else feels pretty good. Again, the 3.7 percent unemployment rate, real wage growth is positive. People are a lot wealthier. I mean, stock prices, as you know, are record highs. Housing values are record highs. You know, if you own your own home, two thirds of the America, of American Americans do. You're sitting pretty uh, on all that equity. Okay. If you're a shareholder, which is, you know, 60% of Americans, you know, you're doing a lot better. So I think we should sure. be feeling pretty good. I'll throw out one wild card. The thing that makes me nervous, two things. One, oil prices and gas, the cost of a, a, a gallon of regular unleaded and mortgage rates. Those are the two things I worry about the most in terms of what yeah. it might mean for, for, uh, for the election.